Hi guys, right now we'll show you how to connect steering wheel controls using this uh, steering wheel control interface. It's called ASWC1. And uh, this is how it looks. So it's pretty much it's a box. And you have a bunch of wires here. This unit is a universal fit, which means it will work with majority of the vehicles and uh, majority of head units. Uh, it it uh, auto detects most vehicles and uh, auto detects aftermarket radio. So in our case, we are right now working on Scion TC, and you can see we are installing 8 Auto S8 Pro instead of this original uh, head unit. In order to get installation instructions, you will have to go to the website specified uh, right here. It's uh, accessinterfaces.com, where you you will enter your vehicle information and it will provide uh, all instructions in PDF file something like this so these are the instructions uh, for our vehicle 2016 Scion TC and uh, we'll do this uh, installation today uh, based on this vehicle but as I have previously said this unit is universal it's just you will have to get uh, vehicle specific information from their website so as you can see our S8 Pro head unit is connected right now I can change the volume from the unit but not from the steering wheel in order to be able to connect our Etoto head unit to the vehicle we used this uh, uh, Toyota wiring harness you can see it right here so we have two connectors connected to the vehicle and a bunch of them which were originally plugged in into the uh, OEM head unit are not connected and this actually creates this problem the lack of the steering wheel controls so this is where our instructions come in as you can see it shows us uh, the same 28 pin connector this one with a bunch of the small wires so you have to follow all these instructions one by one to do the connection so I'll just give you an example for example it tells us to connect the black wire of the ASWC1 and the wire in pin 23 of the vehicles radio harness shown to chassis ground so we have to look for black wire from the module and uh, locate uh, I believe it's pin 23 in this 28 pin connector so pin 23 will be this uh, small this small gray wire so what they mean is uh, we have to do connection like that to the gray wire and then both of these wires will be connected uh, to the ground somewhere in this area the next step is uh, we have to connect red wire to 12 volt accessory power so what they mean by this is uh, we have to find this red wire and this one will be connected to this accessory wire in uh, our Atoto slash Toyota wiring harness we'll do all this, these installations a little bit later right now I'm just trying to give you an idea how it works next step would be uh, green and orange from ASWC1 to pin 21 of the vehicle's radio harness shown so green and orange uh, green and orange this one will be connected to pin 21 so pin 21 is uh, this small yellow wire so don't get confused by the amount of wires in this harness as you can see uh, if you follow instructions most likely you will just use a few of these our access module also comes with 3.5 millimeter jack which in our case uh, will probably be able to use uh, because as you see our 8 auto harness 
also comes with one. Uh, I'm going to go over the wires again and show you guys how we did this connection. So we actually followed instructions which I have downloaded, basically exactly as they suggest we should do it. So from our access uh, module we have one red wire going to uh, the Aitoto slash Toyota harness so it gets its uh, accessory signal from there. Then we have two more wires, sorry, I'm sorry, three more wires, which are uh, this green and orange, the black, and the green and black. All of them go into um, to this connector. So they all have been connected here. This is how we did the connection using these uh, uh, couplers, uh, but again you can do it any way you like. And uh, also, so our black wire that connects uh, to the gray also gets sent uh, to the ground. So, and the ground point, uh, I'll show you where it's located in this vehicle, is right here. You can see there is a bull there. This is where we connected the ground. So in this vehicle it was done this way. I know there is lots of wires, but as I have mentioned before, if you follow the instruction, the manual, you should be able to figure it out. All wires have been connected, and right now we'll see our LED signals. Okay, so we have a red LED light, which means that uh, the access module has uh, recognized the vehicle. We have seen a number of LED uh, lights flashing, and in the end, uh, after the sequence of lights, uh, we so solid red which means that uh, the module has detected the vehicle okay so our access module has recognized the vehicle but it we still don't have uh, steering wheel controls and uh, the reason for that is it did not recognize uh, the Aitoto head unit in order to fix this we'll have to choose a radio type manually as you can see in the manual we have a um, a bunch of different uh, radio types and uh, like I'll tell you right away because I already tried it uh, radio type number one Eclipse type one will actually work for a Toto but when you do your installation if uh, that option doesn't work for you I would go through the whole list until you find the one that works so uh, again uh, in the manual there are instructions how to change them but I, I will quickly show you how it's done so first of all we have to turn off the vehicle and then put the ignition into the on position. Now we have to wait for 3 seconds and then we will need to press the volume uh, down button. Press and hold it. So now you will see a solid red LED on the access module. And again, I'm, I'm, keep, I'm still holding the minus button. So once you see that, now you can choose the uh, number of the radio type. In our case, it's number one. So what you'll have to do, you'll have to press the plus button once. And when you press it, you need to make sure that you'll see a 
a red light uh, flashing on the module so I'm gonna press it right now okay so it means we just basically uh, pressed it once if you have to do it multiple times red let's say for Alpine you have to press it seven times and you have to see the light seven times so once you've done that you have to press minus again and then you will see uh, the solid red light again so I'm gonna press it right now press and hold it so now we see the solid red light it will disappear it means that right now our radio type has been uh, chosen so from here we have to go to SWC setup in our Etoto system and uh, as you can see here it tells us uh, to press and hold a button on steering wheel to start learning matching so I'm gonna press I'll, I'll try to show you guys minus button and you can see that uh, our text has changed and now we can select one of the buttons uh, basically we can give this button the value that we would like it can be actually any value that you see here in this list so I'm gonna uh, it's gonna be a bit, a bit tricky I'm by myself right now so it's gonna be like this I actually have to use my elbow press minus and uh, here we will choose minus basically this assignment of the value is complete so now our minus volume button is gonna do what it has to do reduce the volume same thing with plus so I'm gonna pl press plus and you can see a similar text again so I'm gonna again use my elbow press plus volume uh, sorry volume up and choose the value to set up another button uh, actually both of these it's gonna be slightly different because when I press them you can see it kind of disappears I'm not sure exactly why but I found the way to uh, make it work so I'll have to continuously press one of the buttons and at the same time I'll be I'll have to press uh, the value that I want to give it on the screen as well so I'll try to show you guys how I have to set up camera like this so right now I'm gonna press the, this button multiple times on the steering wheel and the, on the screen so you can see that our text is changing and at the same time I'll have to uh, press this button to give it a value, a value. so as you can see now it has a value same with the other one okay so we set up both of these buttons so this one this one and this one so we have basically our four of our buttons now have value as for the mode I can't say that I have used it much before with the original head unit and uh, what's cool because right now I can actually choose any other value that I want and uh, what I would like to assign uh, to it is uh, this one pause play which actually I think is uh, really nice at least for myself so I'll have to use the same method so I'm, I'll have to press it multiple times at the same time uh, pressing the button on the screen like that okay there we go so all five buttons have been set up now I have to press save and exit now let's test our buttons so volume down there we go up it works down now I'm gonna uh, play some music so I will go to Bluetooth music and there you go volume down now I'm gonna change my tracks my music back and forth 
One more time. Volume up, volume down. Okay, and uh, I'll try to pause it now. So I'll press the mode button. Music has stopped playing. I'll pr press it again. Yep, everything works now. I think it's pretty cool that you have this SWC, which is like steering wheel control setup. Again, because, well, you can actually assign uh, any of these options to any of your buttons. So, for example, uh, if I want to, uh, well, my current uh, mode button is assigned to pause and play, well, I can assign any other value to it. For example, uh, I can choose this button to uh, answer the phone, for example, or I can uh, uh, choose a mute button, so anything you like, and I think that gives you a lot of flexibility. So, um, this setup was pretty challenging, to be honest with you, because we had to figure out a lot of things on our own. But it's possible to do it, and uh, this access uh, module definitely works. So I, I really hope that uh, when you guys do this installation yourself, all this information will be pretty helpful. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.